When humans interrupt nature's balance, we can expect almost anything to happen. In most places around the world, human development moves freely without much planning or consideration for nature and animals. Economic interests tend to have the upper hand. Sometimes entire cities develop around national parks. Ecosystems or simply around an animal species. Unfortunately, most of the time, human development does not meet nature's expectations. Around the world, when coastal communities or any other community is looking to develop new industries, sustainable tourism, there's always an issue of balancing it with nature conservation. And even more so when you're thinking about nature-based tourism and conservation and the other activities that might be prevalent in the area, whether it's fisheries, industrial development, etc. While tourism supports livelihoods and can incentivize conservation through better management of nature parks, it also challenges local governments under pressure by high tourist volumes. Consequently, Tourism and accompanying urbanization are generating adverse consequences in the most pristine natural areas. Tourism began to develop in Peninsula Valdez in the 1970s as part of a growing interest in viewing rather than hunting marine mammals in their natural habitats. Y tenía el privilegio de poder conocer lugares maravillosos, naturales de Argentina. Uno de esos increíbles lugares para mí únicos del mundo, no solamente de Argentina, es toda la península de Valdés. He podido ser testigo de, de la belleza de su naturaleza, de convivir y sumergirme eh, en su hábitat. Puerto Madryn has been the gateway to Peninsula Valdez, one of Patagonia's best places to admire marine wildlife. The city has expanded over the last 40 years, increasing from a few thousand to 120,000 inhabitants. The city expanded extraordinarily, not just in the number of inhabitants, but also in the number of industries that got established in this place. First, there was a, an aluminum plant that has expanded many times today and is one of the largest in South America. And then the fishing industry. At the same time and on a similar scale, the tourism sector grew due to the development of ecotourism. Today's visitors exceed 300,000 per year. Almost all of them enter the Valdez Peninsula to observe the fauna.
UNESCO World Heritage Site, Peninsula Valdez, with an area of around 4,000 square kilometers, is an important coastal habitat for marine wildlife. Out of all the species, the one that attracts the most tourists is the emblematic southern right whale. A species of baleen whale that can be found across the entire southern ocean and was declared a national monument by the Argentines. There is an implicit responsibility by all Argentine people to protect the whales when they come to give birth and nurse. These whales can grow up to 16 meters in length, weigh as much as 50 tons, and are as social and as acrobatic as humpback whales. They're very curious and playful, and their friendliness towards humans almost triggered their downfall in the past. Their name, right whale, originates from being known to whalers hunting the species as the right whale to hunt. As it became clear that the population was about to disappear for good, right whale hunting was banned in 1937. The Patagonian region of Argentina is a crucial habitat for southern right whales, with the largest concentration of breeding individuals in the world. Carving females are known to return to these grounds every three years. Generally, calves are born between June and November. In 2022, the Peninsula Valdez Scientific Aerial Survey counted a record 1,500 whales and 500 newborn calves. At present, the global recovery of the southern right whale is at a rate of 6% per year, with a total population of 14,000. However, not all the southern right whale subspecies have recovered. The Chile-Peru population has no more than 50 individuals and therefore ranks as critically endangered. Other populations in Asia, Oceania are still at risk.
La primera vez que vi ballenas fue en el año 2012. También fui a Península Valdés, fui a Puerto Madryn y me acuerdo que se me caían las lágrimas porque de verdad me emocionaba y todos los que estábamos ahí. Éramos 30 personas y había un silencio porque era tan eh, sublime lo que estábamos viendo, tan, tan maravilloso que era solamente estar en silencio por contemplando todo eso. La actividad de avistaje de ballenas comienza ya hace más de 40 años con los pioneros del avistaje de ballena en Península Valdés. Una actividad que empezó con un puñado de visitantes, diríamos lanchas de hasta 6 pasajeros. Hoy en día tenemos lanchas de hasta 70 pasajeros, las cuales en temporada alta salen completas. Se estima que un promedio anual de visitantes que ven a ver avistaje de ballenas a Península Valdés anda entre los 80 y 110 mil personas al año. Pero, unfortunately, a Península Valdés Not everything has been easy for the recovering population of southern right whales. Little is said about a unique and extraordinary problem affecting most whales. Ship strikes, entanglement, plastic and acoustic pollution and toxic algae blooms affect whales in Patagonia as they do in any other part of the world. However, what is exclusive to Peninsula Valdez is that almost 100% of mum-calf pairings are affected by vicious attacks from seagulls. Me pasó en la última visita que, que tuve a la península eh, el año pasado, en donde en el medio del avistaje vi como dos o tres veces como las gaviotas cocineras le picaron directamente el lomo a unos ballenatos. The same majestic animal that once helped to develop the city and its tourism is now a direct victim of this success. The kelp gull is widely spread around the southern hemisphere. Locally known in Argentina as the gaviota cocinera, it is the most abundant gull in coastal Argentina. The last survey is unfortunately over 10 years old and calculates them at 100,000 pairs. Sadly, today its population remains poorly understood. Seagulls can be friendly and sometimes, given their beauty, they can become a symbol and even a country's national mascot. Unfortunately, most of the time they become a nuisance due to the negative impact they have on human activities and their predation on other bird and mammal species. Kelp gulls are very opportunistic feeders and will consume almost anything. They have a general menu which takes advantage of many food sources, including non-natural foods, urban waste and discards from fisheries. Today in Argentina, the kelp gull population is a real matter of concern, not only because of their attacks on whales, but also because they are major predators to eggs and babies of threatened species. Puerto Madryn is a port and uh, receives many visitors, but it's also a fishing port. And there are some plants that process fish on land. And uh, there were none in the 1970s, and there are many, many today. That is good, it's good for the economy of the place, it's good for the province, it's good for the people. But it's not coming for free. These companies not only have been harvesting the ocean, but in addition have been polluting the land because some of these companies discard the products of uh, processing the fish in open dumps. And uh, there is the source of the problem that subsidize the goals, that allow them to increase in abundance. Puerto Madryn's fish and shrimp processing plants discard in a year alone over 60,000 tons. Less visible but of huge impact are the regional fish processing vessels and their fleet at sea that discard overboard a thousand tons of fish bycatch every day helping also the albatross and gull populations to keep increasing. Ya está identificado como como causas 
de esta, de esta problemática lo que tiene que ver con el mal manejo de los residuos de la industria pesquera. Tanto en el mar, con los llamados descartes pesqueros, en el mar argentino, esto, por ejemplo, para el caso de las merluzas, ronda los 100.000 toneladas anuales. Lo mismo sucede cuando, cuando se procesa en los puertos eh, el pescado. I compared three different populations of capguards. One of them was feeding in natural prey, crabs, fishes, snails, bivalves. The other population feed at whale bags, uh, picking up the um, skin and blubber of them. And the other population of capguards was feeding on fishery in the scars. Parasites are a good indicator of animal well-being. Those that feed on natural prey have a lot of parasites and the uh, community of parasites are very diverse. When we compare with those capgals that feed on whales back, uh, the community parasite of the capgals reduce their richness. The same happens when they feed on fish or in the scat. Our conclusion is that capgals would prefer to feed on a whale's back rather than fish in the scar or natural prey. For over 30 years, NGOs, scientists and government officials have been debating on a potential solution. But in the meantime, the issue has become a global one and to find a solution is now even harder. Una vez que una gaviota llega a ser adulta, vive muchos años, 25, 30 años, no porque no tiene grandes depredadores pueden alimentarse oportunamente de lo que aparezca en el momento. En tal vez una década, las gaviotas cercanas a estos sitios urbanos hayan prácticamente triplicado sus poblaciones. Predadores naturales como el zorro, el zorrino, el armadillo empezaron a desaparecer. Esto le dio permiso a la gaviota en crecer en volúmenes muy grandes en las eh, zonas donde anidan, cerca de las zonas urbanas, y un subsidio de alimento de basura y residuos que genera una sobrepoblación en ciertas áreas. Yo creo que la problemática de las gaviotas en Península Valdés es una problemática que eh, no tiene difusión, no está en el común de la gente, pero eso no quita que es una problemática realmente, realmente importante. Está afectando severamente a las poblaciones de ballena franca, que están realmente eh, cambiando la conducta de las ballenas y de los ballenatos que llegan todos los años para parir y reproducirse. A partir de los 70 eh, se han empezado a documentar eh, algunos episodios parásitos. Las gaviotas no solo alimentándose de la piel que se desprenden, sino arrancando trozos de piel de, de las ballenas. Este comportamiento que pareció raro y se mantuvo como una rareza en muchos, durante muchos años en adelante, empezó a hacerse cada vez más frecuente a tal punto en que prácticamente en la actualidad todas las ballenas que están en la zona tienen gaviotas asociadas picándolas. A study in the 1970s showed that 1% of whales were under attack. Nowadays, 100% of calves and mums are being harmed. 
When I was young, my dad would come home after a long day of work watching whales, observing the southern right whales in Puerto Pirámides, and he was telling me that he was worried about the gulls' attack. Now, 40 years later, I'm worried about the gulls' attack. Today, these gulls are attacking every single gull born in Peninsula Valdez. Every time that for some reason I have the chance to walk along the ocean and there are ways around, every time I see gulls pecking on the whales. There is no once that I have been observing whales that within the first five or ten minutes they have not been disturbed by gulls. The whales feel this. This causes pain to the whales. That I have no doubt. When I start a excursion, usually people um, show me where the whales are. Like, how come? It's because they see the seagull attacking a whale and they are, okay, the whales are there because there is a seagull. That's how often this is happening. The attacks on whales are horrific to watch. The gulls are relentless, and the whales have to move at a much faster speed, wasting valuable energy. Analyzing the rate of attack, we discovered that the whales are passing approximately 30% of the day, escaping from the whales, increasing the velocity of the nado, generating new comportments. tomando y utilizando muestras de barbas de ballenas, podemos evaluar cuál es el, 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 el nivel de estrés que ha sufrido un ballenato. Y lo que estamos haciendo es comparar barbas de ballenatos muertos con barbas de ba ballenatos muertos, pero sin heridas de gaviotas. Y hemos encontrado que previo a la muerte, ese ballenato tuvo niveles eh, extraordinarios de, de hormonas de estrés, los que son cortisol y otras. Hemos determinado que los ataques de gaviotas, que son un, un, un indicador eh, muy, muy claro de, de estas mortandades. The kelp gull uses its powerful beak to peck down several centimeters into the skin and blubber, leaving the whales with large open sores, sometimes going from the blowhole all the way to its tail. The attacks have clearly modified the behavior of the whales, as their surface time is reduced, and socializing with other whales has also declined. Attempting to avoid attacks, these escaping maneuvers have some serious consequences. Mothers and their calves have less time for nursing, resulting in thinner and weaker babies una disminución en la lactancia por interrupción de, de, del evento de amamantamiento que tienen las, las, las crías con sus madres, ¿no? por estar defendiéndose continuamente de las gaviotas, bueno, podría de alguna forma eh, coayudar a que esos individuos no crezcan lo suficiente y por lo tanto no logren completar su etapa migratoria hasta las aguas donde se alimentan, ¿no? Around a thousand whales have died in the last 20 years in Peninsula Valdez. The casualties are primarily newborn calves. Clearly, they can't all be associated with seagull attacks. However, it is clear that most whales under attack are biologically weaker. En un principio, las gaviotas no tenían una, una preferencia por, por ningún, ningún tipo de ballenas y ya en las últimas décadas estos ataques se dirigen específicamente a crías. Esto 
en términos de, de porcentajes hacen que la tasa de mortalidad pase del 10% al 35%. Essentially, we now have proof that gull attacks do contribute to whale death rates. The negative effects on whales' health and well-being are no longer questionable. The parasitic behavior of kelp gulls on whales has not been observed in any other location in the world. Kelp gulls and brown-hooded gulls were only following the whales, hoping to pick some loose strips of peeling skin, or even some siamids after a jump or tail slapping, but never to feed on flesh. When you see a whale, you're seeing an animal that is trying to hide the back from the surface. And that is a reaction to, to the gulls. En la madre, algunas tienen alguna técnica para poder evadirlas, que es sacando la cabeza eh, en forma, digamos, eh, perpendicular, sacando solo la cabeza, escondiendo el lomo. Eh, digamos que estas ballenas que aprendieron a modificar su comportamiento habitual y adoptar esta nueva postura, o ya sea la posición de galeón, por ahí tienen menos picaduras porque fueron modificando este, su, su, su hábito de descanso. Los bebés que por ahí copian esta postura son los que quizás tienen menos picaduras, pero no están exentos a tener alguna herida profunda en el lomo. At some point, the government did order the culling of many gulls by the so-called rifle sanitario within a specific zone. Bueno, durante tres años se llevó a cabo este experimento de descaste de gaviotas. Al final, eh, más o menos redondeó unas 4.000, 3.500, 4.000 gaviotas extraídas. Se reducía notablemente los, las tasas de ataque de gaviotas a ballenas. Es prácticamente la zona dejaron de haber ataques. But the large reduction in attacks was not a long-lasting solution. Luego vimos a lo largo del tiempo, o sea, cuando se dejó de generar el descaste, rápidamente las gaviotas volvieron exactamente a la misma situación que estaban antes del experimento. Hoy en día, en la actualidad, no es posible pensar o sostener la hipótesis de que sean pocas gaviotas especialistas las que atacan a las ballenas, sino más bien creemos que es un comportamiento generalizado que temporada tras temporada se propaga cada vez más entre las poblaciones de gaviotas. So it is not a matter of copying a proven solution from elsewhere. It is time for Argentines to take action and be creative. We are trapped in a very difficult problem today. It may not have a solution. If the southern right whale is a natural monument in Argentina, how no one cares about this. La problemática que está pasando en Península Valdés, en Puerto Madryn, es eh, una problemática que no hay duda que se puede solucionar, pero el Estado y las ONGs se tienen que poner de acuerdo y tomar medidas urgentes porque está afectando a una población de especies como la ballena franca austral, que es un emblema mundial de la conservación en el mundo. Hemos castigado el planeta de manera, de todas las maneras posibles. ¿no? Si las gaviotas aprendieron a utilizar un recurso, pero eso está tremendamente manipulado por nuestra acción. No, no debería ser así. La remediación debe comenzar por el saneamiento ambiental. Pensando en soluciones, si bien el, los descartes pesqueros, los basureros a cielo abierto, son problemas habituales, que el control de, de esta basura a cielo abierto es un subsidio de alimento, el cual sí se debería controlar para justamente no fomentar tanto la sobrepoblación de gaviotas. Así que evidentemente la gaviota también fue, en cierta forma, víctima de una readaptación de su hábito natural de alimentarse. Yo creo que es algo que capaz no tiene visibilidad, entonces no se... No llega a las personas, básicamente es eso. Y van a ser muchas personas, muchas más de las que capaz uno se imagina, 
que van a unirse para poder, o por lo menos estar disponibles en cambiar hábitos, en llevar adelante medidas para cambiar hábitos que son muy nocivas para otras especies que cohabitan en el planeta con nosotros. As soon as many realize what's going on when they watch whales, they're not going to be happy. The news are going to spread that the whales of Patagonia are suffering from parasites that make their life impossible. We need to do something to repair that damage. Are we going to close the garbage dams and perhaps enforce the law and make some of these fisheries companies pay for what they have done? Certainly, that's one thing we have to do. It seems that uh, only by forcing the hands of some people, they are going to take responsibilities as they should. There are experts that come up with some kind of approaches that at least decreases the impact of the damage. I don't like to, to propose to kill gulls because gulls are not the main uh, responsible. We are. However, once the problem is established, we have to deal with uh, complex moral issues. I surveyed over 650 tourists from all over the world, Argentines, Americans, Europeans, and everyone was equally upset about the kelp gull issue and willing to contribute towards its resolution. I found out that on average, they were all willing to pay about $20, maybe some a little less, some a little more, and they wanted it addressed through the waste management. And I, you know, after all this work, work I took this work to the Peninsula Valdez administration. I shared it on the radio and through other forms of publication. It's really sad to see now, 10 years to the date later, that the kelp gull issue has still not been resolved.